What is going on, everybody? Jimbo Thick here, back with more Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. We are back from our break. Had a very, very sad moment happen. Last we left off. The remaining dwarves of Karak Zorn have apparently met their end. Very brutally. And at the hands of a demon that the Fellowship may or may not have set free. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> and may or may not be hunting them. <laughs> and led them straight to them. Marius, you're currently... Hovering over the corpse of... Karagrim Amberbelly. And as he's fallen slack and motionless, you notice something clutched in his other hand. The one you didn't press the axe into, which, if his oath is fulfilled, he will bring into the halls of his ancestors. Mm. His other hand almost fortuitously falls slack. And in his hand is a stone you that you would recognize as one of the rune stones that opens up secret ways and activates things it looks slightly different from the one you have on you okay you're more than welcome to do as you please at this point uh we'll probably grab that rune stone okay you grab hold of the stone uh tuck it away you heard the conversation um, between Marius and Karagrim, Bragadine, because of your heightened mm -hmm. senses. So, the three of you, what would you like to do at this point? I go over there and I place my, my hand on the dwarf's head and I say a quick murmured prayer to the lady. Mm -hmm. And then I, I look to Marius and I place my, my, my hand on his shoulder and I say, Marius, once again, you have tr proven yourself to be a man of true nobility. Uh, thank you, Mr. Meadow, but we, we need to leave. And uh, Let's go. I'll kind of help him as we continue to walk up these stairs. I kind of fill in Seamus on, on what transpired with the um, his last words and okay. with um, Moraz. Yes, uh, Moraz. Moraz. Let me let me make sure. Moraz. I have it spelled okay. correctly. Yes, Moraz. It's it's spelled funny because it's uh, a made up language. Um, yeah. But <laughs> Moraz Colmouth. Yes. <laughs> cool mouth. Um, um, I've got to. We've got to kill him before we leave. Um, let's make it up to the next floor first. I have a feeling we're going to run into, run into some company up there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just keep keep on, you know, moving up as we talk. You keep moving. And yeah. very similarly to the staircase you took before, you're in the staircase for almost an hour. You do not hear the thudding behind you anymore. You would probably assume that the demon could not fit into the door. It probably tried and couldn't actually do it. Mm -hmm. um, after an hour passes of monotonous climbing of stairs, you come to a similar threshold before you of what you know is going to open up into the next floor above you. Which... If you are keeping track as best you can, and Marius, you would be a little bit better at this, um, being one that's experienced underground and in mines. Marius, you would probably, you wouldn't know exactly, but you would think that with the amount of time that you've been moving up, that you think you are at ground level. Oh, nice. All right. And the door is closed currently. Mm -hmm. um, as a quick GM note to my players, you can take a short rest if you like. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask. Let's okay. do it. All right. So, yeah, you feel free to, you know that this door probably won't open. 
Um, there's a small, a small room, very similar to the one at the bottom that you were in. There's not really much in it, uh, in the way of furnishings. You see like a chair and a table. Um, there's no cabinets or anything though. An empty tankard laid on its side. So nothing of real value, but a somewhat safe space for now. You mm. sit down, um, take your hour. Um, feel, feel free if you guys want to have any conversations, you can do so now. Um, but after that, you guys will gain regain your toughness bonus in wounds. Uh, Marius will say, it's Moraz, cool mouth, dwarf thing, apparently... He's after us. He believes we have that stone, Bragadine. Uh, remember from the from the tomb, that green stone. Did Bragadine yeah. actually get that out? I don't remember he, if we actually. You he, were in the process. Not. Yeah, you yeah. were in the process of peeling it out when the doors exploded. So you yeah. lost track. Okay. Yeah. He believes we have it. Apparently, is in pursuit. This might be to our advantage, though. We might be able to set up some sort of trap for this dwarf. Um, we could even set it up outside. Um, just if the rest of you can think of anything, you know. Perhaps we could talk uh, to him. Perhaps we could just tell him the <laughs> truth that we don't have. Perhaps, it. perhaps <laughs> not. Uh, he, I do not think he he wants to have the same kind of conversation. Uh, as you do, and apparently he would torture us uh, and shatter our minds. Um, so I'm making terrified faces just with, with the language he's using. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, apparently he has a tall hat, bronze hat. But I swore he would die, and I will not leave until he does. If you have swore this, Marius, I will swear it too. Ah. Thank you, Braggity. I look over at Seamus with like an eye raise, like, you know, like, what's thinking? Mm hmm. Uh, Marius, you know, pretty much anything you get into, I get into as well. So, whether I like it or not, feels like I have ah. to help you with this endeavor you Thank took. Thank you, Seamus. And then that's that's all Marius has to say for that hour. Okay. Uh, since we're on the subject, Marius, they mentioned something about the War of Vengeance. Does that mean anything to you? I, I don't know if Marius knows. You, I, you make me a very hard intelligence test, so minus 30. Or minus hmm. 20. Oh, minus minus thirty. Yes. Oh, Let me see. I have a, okay, that would put me at a six. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, we'll oh, see. Damn. It's <laughs> uh, hoping to be uh, nope, less that's, difficult. <laughs> nope, that's a critical fail. It's a okay. Two. Oh, you have no idea what the hell that dwarf was talking about. Uh, I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, Seamus. I've never heard of the War of Vengeance before. Uh, maybe when we get back to the Silver Taggy, we can talk to Thordum about it. Uh, so these yes. Clans people, I assume he knows something about it. Uh, I'm sure he does. He he likes to <laughs> he likes to uh, he likes to kind of lead on that he knows a, a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> accurate, very accurate. Uh, I, I, this, I know I'll he's going to and I come in carrying this big gun of mine. It's bigger than the oh. one he's got. Oh, oh yes. Don't compare guns, Seamus. And uh, size oh. is not everything, my friend. Uh, uh, <laughs> the shortest man in the room exclaims. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm uh, doing. Why I'm doing this? I'm passing around my little tankard of dwarven ale. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, this, Bragadin, this is... you're, you're a long way from your Bretonian nobility here, huh? You expected to be 
living it up in your normal life. Not down here with us peasants on this grand adventure. <laughs> you are you are correct. I was just in town to try and sell some of my manuscripts. And again, uh, as you remember, I said before, these vile creatures, they smacked me over the head and dragged me through. God, I still don't know where we are. Screaming about my gray eyes. What, what do you what do you write about, uh, uh, Mr. Bunnell? <laughs> well, I uh, I must admit I do I do like to write about the ladies. Mm. Um, in in what context? Um, mm. the context that we don't read my manuscripts in front of the children. <laughs> All right, <laughs> duly noted. Mm -hmm. The kind of tales. Have you ever been to a uh, a higher end brothel? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you haven't. But uh, higher in brothels, they will often have books there of, uh, of pictures and and what we the term. I don't know if you've heard this word, erotic poetry. Erotic that's just, uh, poetry. that is what I that's something I write. I do write mm. just uh, stories and some regular poems. I why well, before we've been sitting here, I've been just scratching away, thinking about uh, something to just an ode to uh, to Sir Amber Berry, Belly there. I. Uh, he was, he was a dwarf of, I don't know, gentlemen, I was moved. I, 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 I did not want to see that dwarf die. Mm. I, I, he did I, choke you out and didn't shot I, you I, with a bow. I can be forgiving. And, and... Fair to be. <laughs> <laughs> I can be forgiving. I, I don't know. I, um, my, my father always told me I have a, um, what do you call a, um, a big mouth, a... Uh, I don't know how you say in uh, your Reichspiel. It's uh, um, one who's a who's a an ass, a, a braggart, uh, a braggart. That's it. Yeah, it's very similar to my name, a braggart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand this can happen. He, uh, no, I was touched when he uh, when he offered me the dwarven arms, and uh, I, d I don't know. There's uh, perhaps you two are aware enough of me. I just uh, I, I I I felt a twin for. Uh, for the loss of this dwarf being the last dwarf of his homeland. Mm. And so I've been just trying to see if I can compose something over here. And Bragan is just scratching away. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's not erotic. And, uh, uh, not about the dwarf. That's, uh, <laughs> no, no, well, that's, sir. That's very, very nice of you. Uh, my, so, no. uh, my Praetorian friend, to, uh, does the name Nicolette Montague. Raise any bells for you. Nicolette Montague. I do know of some Montagues, but that family is it is a is is a big family. There's there's many spread out. I don't know if I know of a Nicolette Montague, but I've definitely heard the name Montague before. Hmm. Please refresh my memory. Ah, uh, well, uh, it's, uh, it's one hell of a night. That's all I got to say about that. You know. <laughs> If, I don't think wants. you and I are talking about the same <laughs> but you... I think you might be talking of, of someone else. You make Seamus roll, a, roll a, a, a lie check or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can roll a charm check. Why not? All right. Am I going to oppose this? You're going to make a, a cool test. Okay. Braggadine. <laughs> uh, what is, this? is this charm? It's charm for you, Seamus. All right. I got a 41. Uh, ah, damn. Am I at a minus 10 for this? You are. Ah, hey. 41 out of 43. And well, I if, I, if I do believe correctly, Seamus, you also have a hideous scar across your jaw. Mm, it does. In addition to the fresh wound, which gives you a minus 10 on charm tests. Oh, snap. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, that so you're actually at like a minus 20 right now. <laughs> so, yes. Um, he fails. Uh, did you pass Bragadine? With three levels of success. Okay, yeah, exactly. So, Bragadine, you can tell that Seamus is not so eloquently spinning a yarn of sorts. <laughs> you, you get the idea that he's talking about a, uh, a lady of um, some beauty, perhaps, and may or may not be pretending that he has had his way with her. Continue would as Marius you may. And, would Marius and Bragadine <laughs> know of Nicolette? 
uh, um, you as the proprietor. now I will say this, um, Marius, you you mm-hmm. you wouldn't know. Well, let's put it like this: I haven't met her or anything, but yeah, exactly. Have you ever been to the brothel, uh, Bragadine? I, I mean, don't even Marius. know if I mentioned it to Marius. Marius has never been there, but okay. he knows that. Um, Thordoom hates the place. He does. And... He he hates the place. Now he, um, I will say this: you wouldn't know the name. Okay. You wouldn't know the name. Um, okay. And matter of fact, not many people do know the name. Just Seamus has spent so much time in there that he I'm has he, he <laughs> has procured more information kind of than most. Um, <laughs> Bragadine. You are fresh in town. You would not know of who they're talking about. Okay. Mm. Hello, you know, it's, if you ever need any writing material, you know, it's just, <laughs> I, I, can, I can pass on pages worth. Uh, well, I, 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 I might just take you up on that offer. Oh, God. Uh, well, well, just, just let me know. Well, well give me a tidbit right now. Uh, oh. it's not that's not the time or place. No, we <laughs> it's, uh, no, 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 no. Come I, on, look, I, I have my look. I can put this palm away. I I've got a fresh piece of paper. My quill is mm. is wet. What mm. you got? We've we've already got an hour. There's not enough time for me. To get into the <laughs> oh, oh I, I thought you had some experience with women. I'm so sorry that an hour to fill is not an, is too much for you. Is that oh. this moment? <laughs> As, as this conversation is going places it shouldn't, <laughs> that um, all of you realize that um, Bragadine's mother is probably very proud of her uh, her her son and his erotic um, etchings <laughs> and of the, sure of the sword. Is. Why father won't talk to him anymore? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've at least learned that much about him. <laughs> and all right, all right. You also my mother thinks I write children's stories. <laughs> Well, we'll we'll see how Lone Knight keeps secret. Um, regardless, it's at this moment um, that um, Bragadine, you would hear first a echoing nearby. It sounds like noise coming from down the stairs that you ascended to get to this level. I shut up and I lift my hand up like an alarm to try and get mm-hmm. the attention of the, the, the fellowship. Okay, you all and do I, so. Quiet down, quiet down. My I... big, big, my, my big surprise face, my big Dale face. I've got uh, eyes all, all big, mm-hmm. and I'm mm-hmm. pointing on my ear, tapping my ear, and I'm pointing like kind of down, like at the door, but at a at a forty five degree angle, trying to yes. trying to emphasize, yeah. Okay, so you do so. And as you do, you hear another echo, and then nothing. Did you hear that, gentlemen? You would be the only one that would be able to hear it, Bragadine, because of your heightened senses. There was a sound. It was two, actually. It was, was it like a metallic sound or like a stone on stone? Or was it, it just was, a... It would sound like perhaps a pebble clanking down the stairs. A very, very small, small something knocked loose. Almost imperceptible to most people. Did you gentlemen see any rats or anything out there? I know I heard something outside the door. It was very quiet. This was coming from down the stairs, not outside the door. Oh, down the stairs. Yes. Down the stairs. I heard nothing. Hmm. And I'm just just listening right now. Perhaps it's time for us to go. That's, 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 that is good. That's, that's a good idea. And I'll grab up my stuff, throw it in my bag. Okay. Get ready to go. You begin to approach the door, Marius. Um, as you approach the door, you um, see the mechanism of source that you kind of depress, and the door shunts inwards and moves to the side, revealing an open hall 
that you very much recognize as is it the, the massive one the, the statue before you is a huge dwarf in archaic armor arms outstretched towards the ceiling holding what you believe to be somewhere up there though you can't see it is so distant above you are in the hall of the ancestors mm. this is the one we entered in after this is the, the elevators yes. this was the um first hall that you saw when you came down the original elevator Elevator, it crashed okay that crashed so you're right. not quite there you're close but you're not okay. quite there because that that elevator ride was not mm -hmm. as far down as the second one. Okay. Let's let's get moving, lads. And I I'll help I'll help but no. Okay. As we try to make our way back. All right. You begin moving into the cavern. You have a a little a Marius. You would at least have a little bit of an idea of where you should be going just because of your experience underground. But I will, however, need some checks to determine right. if we don't get lost in this maze or perhaps discovered by the many, many, many roving bands of chaos worshippers that you can all now <laughs> hear <laughs> and see flickering torches off in the distance. Who knows how close some of them are or how far away. They're far away. Very far away. We hope they're far away. Yes, we do. So, how are we moving forward? We are in a skill challenge. We'll start off with Marius. How would you like mm -hmm. to benefit the group in moving forward? Well, first off, I'm helping Beno along. Okay. Um, so you can try to keep up. That's fair. Um, mm -hmm. I'd probably be on the lookout for one thing. Um, I don't know how you would have me do stealth with um, no intel, you know? Okay. I will allow you... <sighs> with him in tow, that makes it difficult. Yeah. Um, make me a... Stealth check okay. with your um, hmm. I got you get benefits. And, yeah, yeah. Got and I also got stealth underground. Yeah. Um, add your stealth underground to it. Just the okay. uh, just the skill. Okay. And I instead of you getting a lot of advantages, I will give you a just a. A plus 10. A plus 10? Okay. Yeah, so normally you get, you almost get a plus 40, but because you're having to take the time to help him, mm -hmm. make me a plus 10 on the cell check to see how well we do. Okay. Ooh, close. Uh, that is a 48 out of 51. Okay, so I will consider that a success. Obviously, um, not quite a degree of success, but a success nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And it's at this point that I should tell you all that you will need 10 successes cumulative Woo! to make it safely to the next corridor or to the next section that you need to make it to. Six failures and something bad might happen. <laughs> So, next, Seamus McCready. Um, I assume I'm going to be rolling stealth. Okay. Um, if you, I will say this: if you make the same checks over and over again, the three, they're going to start getting harder and harder. So, what, would it be like stealth or perception? So, just. It, it, just tell me what you would like to do. You begin. Marius is leading the way, and so he's. It, the three of you begin to mimic his movements as he can see much better down here than the three of you. Um, especially since I'm assuming at this point with his stealth roll, he is dimmed. He's actually snuffed the candle out and probably ordered you to do the same. Um, 
uh, but no. So there is almost no light down here. There is the glow of the runes um, up towards the uh, walls. And then some of them are actually carved into the statues themselves. So there's a faint blue light. Not enough to really give you steady light to see by, but enough for uh, Marius to see by. And it has shadowed you appropriately. So how would you like to aid the group, Seamus, at this point? If you make a stealth check, it's going to be at a minus 10. Would I be able to see enough to do perception? You could give me a perception check. Right, um, let's do that then. You will, however, have a point of exhaustion, so it's at minus 10. Yep. All right. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, that's good. That is an 8 out of 41. Out of 41. Okay, good. So that is 8, 18, 28, 38. Okay, so th 3? Yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah, 3 levels of yeah. success. Good, yeah. good, very, very good. So you're keeping your eyes out, Seamus. And as you as you are, um, though you can't see as well as Marius, you just get a flicker of movement up ahead, Seamus. And you motion to Marius and point, point it out to him, and he notices it. And you manage to bypass a roving party that also had their torches died down in the dark. Mm. Apparently, some of the followers of Corn don't need light to see. And they are, you see about three or four probably humans, you're not quite sure, in the darkness. Maybe beastmen, maybe some kind of mutants. Either way, they're dripping in fresh blood and babbling to each other as they are walking in some kind of uh, loose formation of sorts. And you bypass them. So that brings us to Bragadine. How would you like to fail the party, sir? <laughs> um, I heard that. Um, <laughs> I was going to do a perception check with my acute, acute senses and great hearing, okay. but that's going to be a negative 10 at this point. It will be a negative twenty at this point now because we are bored. our perception tests are okay. Yeah. All right. Um... Damn it, Jumbo. Um, well, that gives to... that's still a plus ten for you because you get a plus thirty to it. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's do that then. Okay. At this point, that's still that's still going to be my best uh, odds. So. All right. It's a negative 10, but I get a plus 30, so it's going to be like a plus 20. No, it's, it's actually it's, a, a uh, negative 20. You're going to get, a, 30, so yeah, you're gonna get a plus 10, basically, for this roll. Okay. Your perception plus 10. All right. So i got to break a 60. Shit. I rolled... Uh, you know what? We're going to use another fortune. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was not... It was that, that kind of roll, So. All right. All right, much better. 29 mm -hmm. out of 60. Out of 60. So that's mm -hmm. another three levels of success. Very good, boys. You only need three more to make it through this section. So Bragadine is being helped along by, by Marius. Um, and Bragadine, it is, it's, it's very frightening to be down here. Um, you're having a hard time keeping yourself together, in fact. But because of your agitated state, your senses are on edge and you are listening. And as, you're, as you have just now bypassed a group of chaos worshippers, you hear a dripping sound. Braggadine. <laughs> Sounds like water, perhaps. Or blood. Or blood. <laughs> and you hear it just in time to kind of nudge Marius. And Marius, you were about to step in a puddle of fresh blood. And you glance up. Well, Marius, because you're the only one who can see far enough upwards. About 20 feet up, pinned to the statue, 
is two corpses of rat men in tattered armor. Hideous looking. They've got these massive, almost like javelin spikes. Um, three of them in each of their corpses, pinning them to the statues. And they are dead. And the blood that is dripping down, even in the very dim light, is black and brackish. And it's at this point that you begin to smell it. And it smells horrendous as you've gotten this close to it. And may have painted you as a massive target if you had stepped into it. And you manage to circumvent the rather large puddle of blood that is pooling at the base of the statue. And you're on edge for four further grisly totems that may be set in this room. Making your way in the direction that you hope. The elevator or perhaps another set of hidden stairs can be found. And we are at our next check with one Marius Wolf. What would you like to do? Um, can I either uh, use... I either want to look at, see if I can see any secret signs. Okay. Uh, I have a secret sign minor. Or, yeah, I remember that. Or I would like to try to like pick up a rock mm-hmm. and toss it in a different direction from where we are, try to like throw them off our, okay. Our so sit, you know? with the secret signs, um, you would have to make me an intuition test. Oh, okay. For secret signs. If you want to do the throw, mm-hmm. I, <laughs> this is where it, you're not throwing it at something. You're just throwing it in a direction. So it's not really, I'm just throwing it. Yeah, it's yeah, not really can... it's not really a ballistic skill, so I would give you strength for that if you wanted to do that. Ooh, yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> so go <laughs> ahead. All right. That is a 13 out of 60. Okay. Wow. So, Marius, you pick up a loose chunk of masonry um, as you're going, and you notice that you see two converging groups, large groups of cultists and beastmen. And it looks like massive humanoids and blackened plate armor. And they're coming at you from two different directions. They're going to be in your path in, there's nowhere to hide. This room's open. And you don't know what capabilities they might have. They might smell you for all you know. So in the heat of the moment, you reach down, grab a a rather impressive chunk of masonry. About at least the size of your fist, maybe a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Grip it in your hand. And do you... you, It's just not going to really matter. You chuck it to your left, just... Throw it as hard as you can. And you're a strong man. It moves a significant distance out into the darkness past what you can see. Launches out there. And as it does, you hear a boom, a crack. As there was very, uh, while there wasn't silence because these cultists and whatnot are not exactly being quiet. They weren't being that loud either. And as that happens, you, you see many of the beastmen perk up. Their ears stand on end beneath their um, horned helms and um, just natural uh, visages. And they glance in that direction and both groups begin to move away from you. And a path is clear. Nice. To the ruined elevator as you all come across (laughs) the elevator that you all destroyed on your way down here. Um, you see the remnants of the elevator before you what would you guys like to do (laughs) is it like a sheer wall it is yes it is just a wall straight up now there are um like steel beams that the um elevator was um kind of riding along 
So there's four of them, one in each corner, if you'll remember, that go straight up. It's a pretty, it's a steep climb, and um, Marius, you think you could probably, you might be able to do it. It'd even be hard for you. Oh, okay. But you could do it. You, you, you're confident climb. in your skills. Now, um, the other two? Ragnarok <laughs> does not like the looks of this. You, it would, it would be extremely difficult. You would have to aid them in some way. Okay. Uh, then I guess I'm trying to find. I'll, I'll, I'll grab my stones. Okay. Uh, my uh, magic stones. Oh, okay. I thought you were reaching in your pants. Continue. Nope. I thought it was too. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> uh, and um, seeing if I can try to figure out if there's any kind of entrance along this wall. Okay. Uh, staircase wise. Or... Okay. So this for this one, do make me an intuition test. And do you have okay. the stones out? Yes, got it in my hands. You can give me that intuition test at plus 20. All right. That's a 55 out of 60. Ooh, good thing you got that plus 20. <laughs> so, yeah. critical success. You begin combing along the edge of the wall, and not very far from the ruined elevator, what remains of it, you see a just there's a there's just a piece of the wall that doesn't look right. I mean, this is only maybe twenty thirty feet from the elevator. Just doesn't look right. There's something a little off about it, and you notice that there has been webbing on some of the walls here. Not as much as down in the deeps, but on this particular piece, there's no webbing, as if perhaps this piece was moved. After the webbing was placed. And there is definitely an outline of a door. And as you approach with the um, with the stones in your hand. One of the stones begins to glow. As you're approaching. And it's the stone that Karagrim Amberbelly was holding. I'm assuming you move closer and use it? Yes, yes. Okay. As you move closer, the stone begins to glow brighter and brighter. And you see another rune of a similar marking next to what you assume is the secret door begin to glow as well. And as you press the stone to it, there's a very loud crack as the stone moves inward and slides across very loudly as this has not been used in a very very long time you well, i'm gee. assuming you guys all quickly step inside yeah okay you yes. step inside and it's at this point that you all notice that due to the sound you've made you may have alerted the nearby roving bands of chaos worshippers that you have been able to elude to up to this point. You step inside, and as you step inside, there's no room. You're in just a square. And then you notice the sides of the walls. It looks like there are beams. And you feel around, Marius. You're doing this quickly with your critical success. I'm not going to make you roll again. Mm -hmm. You find a stone that loosens. Well, that doesn't loosen. That you press it and it um, almost flaps outward. And you notice that it actually wasn't a stone at all. It was a piece of metal made to look like a piece of stone. And it reveals three levers. You are in a oh. small elevator. elevator. <laughs> all right. All right. And it's a bit um, of a squeeze for the three of you, but you manage it <laughs> in the heat okay. of the moment. Then um, I'm getting this the hell out of here, you know. It's, okay. It's, you begin, you begin pulling the lever you believe to be the one to go up, and it does. You've had enough experience at this point that you mm -hmm. can do so. And it begins ascending at a fairly quick pace. Hear brays and screams down below. 
but you successfully reached the top of where this elevator Ooh. leads with no issues. Nice. Oh, praise so the lady. You are in an enclosed space the entire time. Unlike the elevators you've been in, it is not open to the outside. Mm -hmm. This is obviously hidden for some reason. Not quite sure what it could have been for. But as you reach its resting point, because this one has only two stops from what you can see, what from what you can tell, it actually stops itself, unlike the previous elevators you've been on. It comes to a close. The gears above you begin to stop shifting. The beams um, kind of flex a little bit as you as the elevator um, finally comes to its resting place. And as it does, the stone before you, you hear another loud cracking noise and it begins to depress in slightly and then it jams in place mm. it is stuck so we can't get out you can't get out right now oh what would you like to do <laughs> begin to freak uh. out can I use my my trade oh, skills here to oh, take a hold look on at it? one second here? I need a cool test from one bragging to see how much he freaks the fuck out. Oh. Well, we got a uh, thirty-four. Oh yeah, you're good. Oh, it's gonna be over three. Forty. So yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fine. So, Bragadine, you you you're beginning to panic. I mean, you're in an enclosed space. You might be trapped here. Um, you begin to panic, but you you hold it together enough. Um, Marius, you were about to do something. I was going to try to figure out if I could do trade skill engineer to figure out uh, some way to okay get us get us out of here. Go ahead and give me a, um, I believe, oh, I'll see that that's a dex check. You know what? Yeah, go ahead and give me a, a dex check. Um, okay. Do you, have, do you How many points do you have in it? Uh, well, my skill's at 41. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Um, okay. With your familiarity with elevators at this point, with these particular elevators, I will give mm -hmm. you a, um, well, you're not super familiar. I'll give you a plus 10, though. Okay. Yeah. It's a 22 out of uh, 51. What? what? Oh, sorry, How many criticals are you going to roll today? <laughs> oh, God, <high> hand. <sighs> okay. So, you begin looking at the elevator, and, or at the door that's that's jammed in place. And you see that some of the mechanisms above it are just worn out. It looks like they've corroded, which is highly unusual for dwarven work. You get the idea that either maintenance wasn't done appropriately when this was constructed, or perhaps this was constructed in haste for some reason. And um, it looks like if you remove a few pieces and you fiddle with it for, it takes you a few minutes. But you manage to um, get the door to crack enough open that you, with your very, very pre prestigious strength, are able to get your hands in and push it the rest of the way. And it slides open just enough for you to slip your body through. But it is right. very much still jammed. But you are out of the elevator, the three of you. Nice. Good work, Marius. As you guys spill out, um, Marius is in the lead, of course. Um, Marius, you glance about and you see a familiar sight as you are in the main hall that leads you outside of this godforsaken place. You can see nearby the table that um, Bragadine procured, procured a golden leg from at one point. Um, the piles of riches that are just kind of strewn about this place. 
And I'm going to need a perception check from the three of you as you stumble out of the elevator. All right. All right. <laughs> I got it, if it's a critical Oof. success, I'm yeah. going to <laughs> got, be very I got excited. 11. I got 11 out of no, 57. Critical no, you did not. success. You're a liar. You're a liar. I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm not Seamus, lying. Seamus, what'd you get? I got a 9 out of 41. Okay. Bragging? You got a 39 out of 50. Okay. That's very good, all of you. Obviously, Marius, critical success. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. feel like he's lying repeatedly. I'm not that's lying. fine. It's fine. It's fine. He's a liar. It's fine. It's the truth. <laughs> so, so, Marius, with a critical success, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you hear a hissing noise. Not not so much a hissing noise. You hear a a shifting above you, and this is a large hallway. The, if you'll remember, the ceilings are, are very tall. Um, I'm going to say probably... If, I don't remember what I had the dimension set at. I'd have to go look it up. Uh, for the purposes of this, I'm going to say... Because I didn't expect you guys to get out this quick. Um, I'm going to say about 40 <laughs> feet tall. Okay. And you're looking at around probably 50 feet wide for this for this uh, this main portion that leads you towards the um, the outer doors and it it is a good walk if you will remember towards the uh, towards the outer doors of the hold but you hear something shifting up in the darkness and it's past the point that where you can see except you see several sets of red beady eyes up in the dist- up in the darkness but that's all you see does my pick do anything? Your pick is not currently doing anything. All right. But um, are you gripping it? Uh, I probably would be now, yeah. Yeah, as if you, I, as you glance up and you see um, whatever's up there, Seamus and Bragadine, you notice Mary's looking up and you glance up and you also see them with his critical success. He's able to somewhat point it out for the three of you. And as soon as the sets of eyes, you see at least five distinct sets of eyes. As soon as they seem to notice you're there, the eyes either close or disappear entirely and you lose sight of them. Mm. What would you like to do? Did you see that gentleman? Oh, let's go, let's go. And I, uh, I grab him, yes. uh, Vino and uh, try to try to get out of here. You know. Okay, okay. You begin helping him along. Um, are you moving at a stealth pace, or are you guys just going? Probably stealth. Oh, are we think. moving slowly? Well, yeah, how how far? How far was the door? It's yeah, it's going to it's going to t- at a walk. It's going to take you probably around twenty minutes or so. Oh jeez! At a run or a fast pace, you could at least cut that in half, maybe even sooner. I'll let Mary decide if he wants to throw a nail on his back and can run. Is that the door? <laughs> Pick me up. And let's go. Pick, pick me up. <laughs> uh, I will oblige. I will yes. pick him up and we will, we will run. You go ahead and pick up Vino <laughs> and you begin moving at a quick pace towards the door. I'm and you can see. Looking over his shoulder, holding my shield and my sword, looking back yes. behind us. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, keep an eye on the rear. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so you do. <laughs> so. Um, yes, you throw him over your shoulder and you begin running. And Marius and (laughs) Seamus both, you do see that there is light from the hole that is in the two massive doors up ahead. Um, and you start hearing skittering behind you as you begin to move quickly away. But that doesn't matter. 
as suddenly the light flickers before you. And shapes begin to appear, illuminated, backlit from the outside. Uh, is it is it is it good dro- Dowie? You know, you know, just of, of course it get is. Rig- regular old dwarves. <laughs> it is. I, bu- it I is. believe it's a bunch of Grail knights here. Exactly, of Grail knights. Of course it is. What you see before you, arranged before you. Oh. You see a group of. Three humans. They're tall, very tall. They're probably somewhere around seven feet tall. Jesus. So oh, you hope man. That they may or may not be human. They might be. They're each in very thick, blackened plate armor with hideous oh, rooms man. scrawled upon them. Now, Bragadine can't see any of this, right? He's looking behind. You can right? see, yeah, yeah, Bragadine's facing the opposite direction, but the, the but Seamus and Marius definitely see them up ahead. They are about 70 feet ahead of you. They are pretty much attempting to block off your escape out of this hold, from what you can tell. They're spread out. There's three of them. They, oh, two oh. of them have a shield, a large shield. On their arms. It's almost as tall as they are. And there are skulls. And runes etched into them. And the ones that have the shields. Also have two, have hand axes. Though this hand axe. Is massive and dripping. As if blood is freshly flowing from it. There are skulls. On their pauldrons. And across. Ma- many portions of their armor. And you see red glowing eyes beneath these twisted helmets. In addition to them, you see a hulking figure standing behind the three. Boom. Oh, fuck. I thought he was part of the three. Boom. (laughs) Approaching from behind them. And they begin to split apart. The one in the center is holding a massive great axe, I might want to mention. Oh. You see a man, you hope it's a man, about eight feet tall, hulking monstrosity, rippling with muscle, muscle that would make an ogre blush. What about Marius Wolf? He would make Marius Wolf blush. This is bullshit. I'm I'm upset. He's a blessed champion of the Skull God. As you also We're see, so several groups of cultists and beastmen begin to converge out of side passages to join them. And as they are converging, they're saying, Crum! 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 And the big figure is stepping forward. You see, across his chest is a massive very thick portion of similar steel or ensorcered metal that encases his chest. His legs and feet are also encased in this chaos armor, weeping blood. And underneath, between the cracks and bends in the armor, you see a glow, almost as if there's a hellish forge lit inside of this body. His arms, however, the biceps, the elbow, they're bare. You see flesh. Though the flesh is chalk white, as if encased in the dust of his enemies. They're bones, to be exact. (laughs) He's wearing two massive gauntlets, fingerless gauntlets, of course. And in his hands, he has clutched a gargantuan great axe double bladed and there are huge skulls on each of his pauldrons they look to be about the size and shape of a minotaur skull on each pauldron then decorated across his belt is a sack and in the sack you see bleached white skulls with long beards attached, dangling from his hip. 
Krom has made his presence known. Mm. Oh, boy. What would the three of you like to do at this point? <sighs> Get ready to throw down and kill this man. <laughs> Get ready to throw <laughs> down. Roll me initiative. Oh. All of you. Oh, oh man. Skaven behind us. Maybe. Yeah, wow. Maybe not. Us. Shit. That initiative mm. is shit. You know what? I, I blame the viewers for this one, you know? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> no, no, blame, no, no. Blame all I, uh, the fans. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna help have those people behind us help us. Ah. Uh, Marius rolls oh. an eleven. That's that's pretty good. That's not bad. I got four initiatives now. Okay. Um, Seamus. Seamus rolled a six. Okay, not so great. That's all right though. And Bragadine. Rolled an 11. Rolled an 11. Okay, so you and Marius are tied. I'll let you guys decide when the time comes who's going first. So, um, let me make sure I've got this all right, because there are a lot of pieces in play here. (laughs) Make sure I've got everything set. I remember somebody commented and said that they should all be dead and sweet loot. They available. should all be dead. Yeah, I, I like that. I, I thought that was the best comment. That was, too. I, I mean, that, that was, was like that to, was a good. Yeah. That, I will say it was. Yeah, it was not. You know, tainted. <laughs> I feel with, like it had the most likes. It was the most popular one. <laughs> uh, it was. It was. I, I, it was Doobie. Yeah. Uh, oh no. Oh, definitely not. So let's see here. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, I hope I okay. don't get <clears throat> used as a flail on this one. Okay. <laughs> so I'm assuming you've set down Brackadine, uh, Marius. Yes. And you are all three facing this horde of chaos worshippers. Before Marius or Brackadine can move... Because you guys would technically be up first, but in this case, you're not. As you hear hisses from behind you, "Ah, take the man things. Oh no. And you hear reverberating boom, 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 boom. Several shots ring out from behind you in the darkness. (laughs) And you see several of the cultists' heads explode before you and go limp as their bodies begin to twist. And where the holes were, the flesh begins to writhe. And though they may have fallen, they may or may not be turning into something um, not human. Oh. Ooh. Uh Then, you see as towards the edges of the chaos line are where the um, the large beastmen. And at this point, you see a minotaur step out of the darkness. Um, in addition to everything else that's going on here. <laughs> and <laughs> as the minotaur steps out, you see two figures pull themselves away from the shadow and they are lithe and wrapped in black almost as if the shadows are clinging to them and they each have red beady eyes and they approach the giant creature as it's enraged and be is going to begin charging towards you thinking you are the ones who shot them um and before it can make a move several um well you don't actually see Uh, what exactly happens, but all you hear is the Minotaur cry out and begin to foam at the mouth and collapse on its face, dead. Behind the enemy lines. And the creatures or whatever it was that attacked them fades into the shadows and are gone. And now it is Marius and Bragadine's turn. <laughs> so you guys can pick who's going first. I think uh, Marius will probably take the lead. 
Okay, Marius. So, before you, you see this is happening in very quick succession. You hear the thundering behind you. You he you see the um, several of the cultists go down in a spray of blood, and it looks like some kind of twisted foul sorcery. You see the Minotaur step from the shadows and get cut down just as quickly as it moved, only it's a, to see its assailants disappear. Before you, you have a large range of enemies. They are, like I said, about 70 feet from you. What would you like to do? I don't see the Skaven, though, do I? You don't see them, but you know there's obviously something behind you. Are you okay. grabbing your pick at this point? Yeah, I mean, I, I've got my pick in hand. Okay, you have your um, pick in hand, and as you grab a hold of it, you feel a hum of energy. And you feel heat coming off of it itself. And there's a twinge, and your grip tightens all the more. But you don't know what's going on. Right. You're free to take your turn, Marius. I'm questioning about kind of layout real yes. quick. Uh, it's just a straight hallway, right? It's a straight hallway. There are rooms off to the sides. Um, there's also debris and just chunks of what once was glorious statues and things of the sort laid about. So if you would like to seek cover or something of that sort, there are places to do so. Um, just okay. let me know what you would like to do. And they are... The, how, how far are the uh, cultists in front of me? And um, so they're arranged in kind of a um, like a half circle. About seventy feet mm -hmm. is where Krom is standing. So there'd be a couple cult cultists a little bit closer, but probably not within running speed if you're trying to charge one. Okay. Um, if I can't, if I don't think I can make it, I might try to either hide in, try to let these guys fight each other a little bit, mm -hmm. and so I might try to like get to either some stonework okay or a, a room of some sort if i okay. if i don't think i can make it to anyone all right you know um you to your right you see uh, a pretty large statue um that used to be a proud dwarven probably ancestor of some sort that the head has been cleaved off and is laying on the ground and the head is the size of you um so you can easily you shim you kind of just rush towards it now are you hiding from the cultists, or are you going to try to hide from the Skaven behind you? Uh, either. Because <laughs> it's, okay, <laughs> I will say you could make it to the side of it, and you'd kind okay. of have half cover from each. Okay. Um, wouldn't be full cover, though. Maybe trying to make myself like a, a, a less appealing target. Okay, uh, well in that than, case... Than each other. Go ahead and make me a stealth check as you make your okay. way there. <clears throat> or I guess you could make me a char a charm roll, maybe. Okay. Yeah, to try to um, like make them think that you're not as imposing as you are wielding a massive pick. <laughs> okay. Uh, whichever, they're both very similar in, in checks. So no. I rolled a thirty nine. Okay. Uh, um, and one of them's 43 for the charm and 41 for stealth. Okay, we'll say, so, we'll, we'll go with charm. Um, just okay. because I, I think I kind of like that a little bit better. Um, so okay. you kind of do your best to kind of look like you're you're scared, a little bit frightened. Mm -hmm. um, it will be an opposed cool test from anybody that uh, may want to see through it, though. Okay. So you kind of okay. get over there and crouch down, looking looking scared, timid. <laughs> um, uh, tactical. But tactical. Bragadine, it is your turn. You are at half speed, Bragadine. It took it took Marius his full forty movement to make it there. You have twenty. Alright. Um I wanted to do the same thing. Um, you can, can get I halfway this? there. Now I will say okay. this, Bragadine. You can spend a resolve point and I'll let you take your full movement this turn if you want to do that. Alright. Um, it's like getting like a quick boost. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Is it resolved? So you'll you'll be able to make it to where he is. Um, do you want to crouch okay. down next to him? Yeah, and um, also I want to make myself look as <laughs> unlikely a target as necessary. Do, do so the no, same no, thing, then give me okay. give me that charm test. Okay. Oh man, I rolled a three. Oh, okay. 
out of 60. Okay, so, so okay, yes. So I'll uh, five levels of success. I'll keep that yeah. in mind if anybody's looking to attack you. Um, Shame. Well, no, Seamus, it's not your turn yet, Seamus. You're standing out there by yourself as you, yeah. you don't quite react quick enough as your fellow compatriots. You're still a little bit stunned at what is unfolding before you. You witness as Marius and Bragadine, almost in the same motion, um, take off towards that uh, fallen dwarven head off to your right. But before you can move, Seamus, the two um, large warriors, I'm just going to refer to them as chaos warriors at this point, the ones with the shields begin to move forward. They move as far as they can. They move about 40 feet in your direction, Seamus. And as they do, they plant their shields in front of them. Boom! Shielding themselves from you entirely and from what might be behind you. And right after they do that, Krom... Boom, 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 walks forward. Now, he is a foot taller than the shield, so just his helmet is sticking out, his head <laughs> with the with the fiery eyes above it, and he's standing behind them currently, That's but that's his full movement. That's as far as he can move. Um, the one with the axe, the, lar the great axe, similar to Krom's. Um, let's see here. He actually moves off. He peels off towards Marius, apparently. Because of his cool test. He barely beat yours, Marius. Oh, no. He doesn't make it to you. Oh, actually, no, you moved 40 feet, so he would make it to you, Marius. No. Not, not, but I will say there's obscurement, so I won't give him a charge bonus. So he peels off, and as he does, you hear this, like, throaty bellow. Blood for the blood god! And I need you to defend yourself, Marius. Okay. And this is a Chaos Warrior? This is a Chaos Warrior. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> That's a 33 out of, uh, yeah. A lot. 70. <laughs> Out of 70? <laughs> yeah. Critical. That was awesome. Okay. I also rolled a critical. Mm. So I will cancel them out. All right. Oh. Oh. But <laughs> you will not take the hit. <laughs> so right. they will cancel out. You will barely scrape by on this one. Um, Do I get a mo momentum? Yes, you what you can get to you can get one momentum from that. So you, at the last minute, you bring the pick up and um, you you're actually as almost a defensive movement. You bring it up and you are going to spear him under the chin um, as best as you could. But he um, ducks backwards and then lashes out with the axe, and you just have enough time to catch it on the haft. And as you do, Marius, for the first time in a long time. Your planted feet move about a foot as you use all your strength to try oh. to hold this seemingly human back, but he is freakishly strong, possibly stronger than you. Oh, I don't like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of his turn. Seamus, it is now your turn. You Ooh. see the phalanx almost laid out before you, and then you see one of the warriors charge towards your compatriots. What would you like to do? I would like to shoot at the one charging my compatriot. Okay, he's going to be... Okay, at this point, from the angle, he is going to be behind full cover. I would say it's probably oh. an impossible shot, because Damn. he's on the other side of the head statue fighting Marius. So you can just see Bragadine at this point um, from the angle. Now, if you wanted to move in their direction, uh, basically you're not going to have an angle on, on that particular guy. Uh, an easy shot, that is. 
Mm. And then the other guy's behind a shield, so he's fully they're covered. Bu- they're behind. They have two guys with large tower shields. Um, I mean, you've got a big gun. It's true. You know. But if they're in full cover, I don't know. It's... Well, that is not considered full cover. Oh. The she- but and then, uh, there there may be a special mechanics behind the giant shields, but it is not it's not considered impossible. And then uh, I can see the top of uh... you can see his head. Yes. And so what's you... the, what's the what's the penalty for that? Is it a minus it's, ten? For... It's a it's a minus. Um, I believe it's a minus. Let me make sure. I want to say it's a, it might be a minus twenty for an aimed shot. Let me make sure though, because I want to get this right. Uh, da, 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 ranged. Hmm. Damn it. Wait, 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 wait. Nope, that's magic. That's not uh, a regular gun. Okay, I want to say it's a minus 10. So you'll be at a minus 20 because you still have a point of exhaustion. Uh, uh, but I will take a shot at the shield. And hopefully just, it's just powerful enough to break it. Okay, so you're going to shoot at one of the Chaos Warriors with the shields, okay? Go ahead and make <laughs> me an I, attack. There's not much I can do. Everything's going to be like a minus 20. So is this with your Thunderer? Yes. Okay, go ahead and make the shot. All right. Um, ooh, it's, it's good. It's going to be a 4 with a minus 10 of 56. Okay. Um, 15, all right, four out of 56. Five. Yeah, it'll be five levels of success. Okay, five levels of success. Um, Seamus, you level the Thunderer, and you kind of crouch down, prepare yourself for the kick that um, it knocked you on your ass the last time you shot this. You level it at the Chaos Warrior uh, nearest to you. Well, they're they're about the same distance, but the one on the right, because you're probably looking to move in that direction towards your um, towards the other members of your fellowship. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And you boom, let loose, and as you do, you just see just a twinge of movement from the warrior, and the bullet. Ricochets perfectly off of his shield. No. Um, unfortunately, I cannot deflect it back at you because I got a critical success <laughs> on my defense. Oh, but I felt like that might be a little harsh. So, oh, that would. so it deflects off. It ping, pings off and you just hear this boom as a piece of masonry explodes off the wall towards the corner. Mm. You've Oops. seemingly done no damage, Seamus. Uh, I tried. Tried something. So what are you going to do now? You still have your um, movement and your free action. Ah, jeez. I can move closer and still be screwed. Um, I guess I will move closer, but not where Bragadine is. I guess in a different spot, so we're not all bottlenecked with each other. Okay. You move in their direction. You're a few paces from Bragadine, I'll say. Um, moving moving away. You see the eyes of the warrior you shot at kind of follow you as you move. Is that the end of your turn? Yep. Okay. Um, at this point, we are technically at the bottom of the initiative order um, because I just rolled one big initiative for the rest of these people. So... Um, it's at this point now that all of you are gathered that now you can see that there are foul creatures. You hear (laughs) running from (laughs) behind you and you hear many, many footfalls. Kill slay man things. And there are these foul rat men that Seamus knows very well at this point. Um, all of you have had some experience with them. Um, running um, where you guys were standing previously um, in the direction of the Chaos Worshippers and, of course, Krom himself. And they all have, like, shitty armor and weapons about them. None of them look heavily armored whatsoever. 
it, it looks like a futile attempt, but they do have numbers. You <laughs> see at least 20 of these rats surging out of the center in one big block, go moving straight where Seamus was standing previously. Probably a good thing he moved. And are beginning to engage and encircle um, Krom and his lackeys. The cultists and the beastmen charge forward. Unimpressed with the numbers of these creatures. With bellows of rage dripping from their lips. And you see several of the cultists fanatically begin to flay skin off their backs with scourges. And then fling it towards the uh, rat men as they blink away blood from their eyes. Only to be cut down in the process. And there is a bloody battle happening all around you. That brings us to the top of the initiative order. So. You hear another boom, 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 boom. And Seamus, since you have the best angle and you're not cur currently fighting someone, you see another weapon of some sort deflect off another Chaos Warrior shield. Ting! Glances off. You see a Ratman's head explode as it was charging Krom and obviously a bullet went astray and just decapitates him. Oh, no. bloody pulpy mess the rat behind him goes hey! and flinches back and begins to kind of cower away um, the third glances off Krom's helmet that is exposed it glances off and he seems unfazed he just bellows out Rawr! and as he does I need everyone to make me cool tests oh gee Oh yeah. Uh, I'm 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 sitting eye too. Okay, very I good, will. Mr. Bragadine. How about Marius? Uh, fifty-one out of sixty. Out of sixty. Okay, still yeah. barely a pass, but we'll get to that. Um, Seamus. Okay. We'll be at twenty-three with uh thirty-three or thirty-four. Is that with your minus ten? Yes. Okay. Okay. So that is one degree of success. Uh, 33. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, Marius, mm -hmm. you begin to feel a quickening of your pulse as you hear Krom bellow out and you, you begin to twitch a little and you're, ah, ah, ah. And your eyes, suddenly you see a shade of red. And you oh, no. have gone into a frenzy, Marius. Oh, no. Oh. Seamus and Bragadine, you, the two of you kind of shake your heads and you feel a presence kind of pressing into your very soul, but you manage to, to stave it off. Oh, actually, Seamus, you would have been immune because of your resistance. So it doesn't matter yeah. to you because of your resistance to chaos. So you're fine. Um, Bragging, though, you managed to just kind of shake it off and um, you're still cowering next to Marius, who now at this point, Marius begins screaming like a madman and is probably going to attempt to kill the one killing him, I'm sure. So that brings us to... The creatures, um, after the sounds of the explosive, you're assuming some kind of black powder weapons in the darkness. Um, Marius, you see two creatures once again deploy from the darkened sides of the corridors. You can see this over the Chaos Warrior shoulder, and they cleave their way through several cultists that have their backs turned to them and they go down almost without a whimper. They just, <laughs> and they're instantly dead fall to the floor. They kill four, one with each slash. Oh, 
And at this point, you can see that they have what looks like two blades strapped to each of their arms. They are completely covered in black, maybe cloth of some kind, maybe skin. You're not exactly sure what it is. It kind of has a gross kind of look about it. And the only thing you can see are their beady red eyes, other than the blades off of their arms that look like they're dripping a foul-smelling green acoustic liquid. And they quickly slink back into the shadows. And now it is Marius and Bragadine's turn. I'm going to let Marius go first this time since he is in a frenzy at this point. Yeah, I'm assuming my only option is to attack this guy in front of me. So with frenzy, yes, you have to attack the closest thing to you. Um, Fortunately, there's someone attacking you, so you do not try to um, bring your pick through Bragadine's skull. (laughs) Bragadine is so glad. <laughs> so, um, for Frenzy, you now you are immune to all psychological effects. You cannot retreat for any reason. You must move and attack the closest enemy, um, which in your frenzied state is everyone. Um, you gain a free action melee test each round. You also gain plus one to your strength bonus. And you will remain in frenzy until all of your enemies are dead, pacified. Or you are knocked unconscious. Oh, no. Um, You can use a (laughs) resolve point to um, make the effects go away temporarily. But because of the nature of this, I will allow you as an action to make a cool test to remove the effects of the frenzy. If you want to try to shake your will of it. All right. I guess for right now, since I'm fighting this guy, I'd probably begin just attack it. Okay. Go ahead and make me an attack towards the chaos warrior. Okay. Do I get any bonuses to the attack or just to damage? Um, I, Want to say, I believe it was just the damage. Yeah, it's just damage. You just get a plus one get, to your strength bonus. Do I get two attacks now? You get two attacks. Basically, as a as your free attack, you can make another uh, uh, melee I attack. See. Okay. All right, then I'll, I'll try to attack this guy. That is going to be a 34 out of 80. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that definitely hits. So, um, <laughs> how much damage is that? Roll it for me, or tell, tell me how much it's uh, going to be. Let me see. Uh, that would be 17 damage. Whoo, shit, man. Um... 17, that is takes him in his right arm. 5 plus 4, 4, nine. Ooh, not as much as you'd hope. Not as much as you'd mm. hope, Marius. I'm sure he's pretty he's pretty, pretty armored. You, Yeah, he's heavily armored. The plate yeah. is thick. But I do have plus pick, one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. your pick bypasses a one piece of one point of armor. As you dig it in, you hammer it home into kind of his, uh, his right shoulder. And it it slips through the metal, though with resistance. Before, when you um, killed the um, the Dawizar with it, you didn't feel much resistance. This feels like almost like a similar material, perhaps. As you plunge the pick in, and it wets the uh, <laughs> the the um, pointy end of your weapon. You're free to make your next attack. All right. That's 25 out of uh, 90. 25 out of 90. That's definitely going to hit. Roll or tell me how much um, that's going to be. That uh, is... Uh, 
Uh, 18. What's 18. Whew. Man, Mary's okay. hits fucking hard. <laughs> He's still standing. You pierce him through the shoulder again. The same shoulder. You draw back and, ah, in your frenzied state, it's quick. You're smack, smack. And the pick drives through the shoulder again. And you, you, you feel the man begin to buckle um, as this rage is overcoming you. And he grabs a hold of your pick with his free hand and throws it to the side. You still hold your, you're still, of course, holding on to it, but he peels it mm. off of his body. And he looks severely wounded. You see blood dripping out of the wound profusely. And um, he's kind of breathing heavily, but he's still standing. And I'm assuming that's all you can do because of your frenzied state. So we will move to Mr. Bragadine. Yeah. All right. Um, how close? So Marius is like right next to me. He's fighting this right giant. next to you fighting a chaos warrior. And he just looks like a, a, a deranged beast. Because you've frenzied, never, so. you've never, he screams out after you hear the call and you hear all of the cultists and the chaos warriors answer the call. They're probably under a similar effect as one Marius Wolf right now. Okay. And um, though Bragadine probably wouldn't know exactly what that was. And you do see many of the Skaven do the same thing. And uncharacteristically of their kind begin charging headlong, not waiting for backup for more numbers towards the enemy. All right. Sounds like everybody might have the same condition. Okay. Um, uh, Bragadine's scared that if he... he uh, I don't want Marius to attack me. Um, can I use my action to disengage from the... Um, so I'm not actually in melee here, right? You're not... You're not technic so Marius is very focused on his target. I'm going to say that he probably isn't going to notice you at the moment. Unless you get into line of sight. Can I see she Seamus? You can see, yes. You, Seamus is about 10, 15 feet from you, behind, in the direction you came from. Okay. I'm going to go over there and back him up. Okay. You move to Seamus with your with your shield raised. Um, are mm -hmm. you just going to maybe ready in action? Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming you're ready to stab, stab yeah. something. And, I, if it and I'm by. just telling him, I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with Marius. But I'm here to help you. Okay. <laughs> that is that then. So Bragadine moves to protect the, the one man that's tried to kill him multiple times. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, that leads us to the other Chaos Worshippers and Krom himself, of course. So the Chaos Warriors, the two with the tower shields, the one of them was glancing towards Seamus, sees Bragadine kind of um, shuffle over and interpose himself as you see the warrior begin to approach Bragadine. You lever your shield in his direction. His shield is much bigger than you. Um, <laughs> so, Sorry. yeah. It's about two feet Got taller it. than you are, and he's he's closing in. And as he does, he moves the shield to the side, and you see he's got this huge blade, and it is wreathed in hellfire, very similar to the demons you fought before. Um, Bragadine, since you're in the way, he's going to try to chop your head off, so I need you to defend yourself. Oh, I got a 33. Ooh, nice. okay. Yeah. Um, um see. That would be... roll me just one D one hundred. Okay. Twelve. Okay. All right. That's uh, that makes sense. All right. Um, how much damage would it be? With a well, with a thirty three. Right? With a thirty three out of yeah. uh, let me see fifty seven. Fifty seven. So forty. Yeah. So two. so so two plus seven. So nine total. Yeah. Okay, so um, Bragadine, you see him move to strike you. He looks like he's callously, like swatting at you with his with his sword, 
And as he does, he obviously doesn't think of you as a threat. And as you um, very deftly, very skillfully duck underneath the, the blade, using your shield to protect yourself, you lash out with the sword and you make contact with the armor. Let's see. And Bragadine, you take a chip out of the chaos plate, but you don't penetrate it. Ooh. But you have damaged it as he has shed one piece of armor, one point of armor. And I just got a point Spe of momentum too, right? Specifically, yes, you get one momentum. And to his left arm, there is now a weakened part. It has less armor than the rest of his body. Excellent. And he kind of glances down at you, um, gauging you as possibly a worthy skull for the throne. And that's the end of his turn. Um, the other warrior charges headlong into the encroaching rat men, bowling one over and smashing its head easily. Um, yeah, easily. And then there's Krom. Krom looks around, looking for a worthy opponent. And then his eyes lock on Seamus McCready. Oh, you! Oh, oh. shit! You like you! Oh. And as he says it, his eyes flare. <sighs> With his red heat like billowing off of him. He takes his axe, double-handed, Pulls it over his head as he's charging at you, Seamus, and he's going to attempt to cleave you in two pieces. Hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Seamus, I need right. you to uh, make me a defensive roll. All right. So he, now he is say... not he's not considered a large creature, even though he's freakishly okay. tall. Okay. Whew. Um. All right. So. If that's the case, then my Wait, because melee... of your yeah because of your blade you can draw it and defend yourself. Oh, so yeah, my melee basics would be the best route for this, and if mm -hmm. he's not considered large creature, so I will do that. I'll attempt to block. Okay, attempt. You can attempt a block. Um, that is a twenty-five out of fifty. Ooh, okay, Crom pulls the axe up over his head and, and he's lunging down and as he does you have just enough time to reach down with your good hand take your rifle with your your thunderer with your left and pull the blade just quick because it it pulls so quickly you're able to pull it loose and just barely skim the blade of this axe away from you as it as it carves down the blade and as it does Seamus um, I need you to make me a cool test uh, ooh that's going to be an 8 out of 34 okay so Seamus you feel um, a scream but it's not allowed it comes from your sword as the blade, the metal itself begins to hiss almost as if something is cutting into it as the blade sc scrapes along the sharpened edge. It doesn't damage it, but just contact with this weapon um, may have caused you harm in some way, even defensively, oh. if you had not rolled well enough. And you... you pull to the side and you are engaged in melee with this man currently with one yes. momentum though yes oh he doesn't get two attacks um actually you're right he does thanks for uh, reminding me Seamus that was nice Seamus. of you uh, so, you know what's wrong so, with you so Seamus he is going to as as that pulls free he's going to wheel it over his head and he's going to attempt to strike you again I need you to defend yourself I'm gonna get cleaved in two on this one Oh, that's a 17 out of 50. Once again, just enough. Man, you're lucky. 
you duck down as it passes over the top of your your head where surely it would have killed you. And you take the blade and just shunt it just a little bit, just enough to get over the top of you. Um, once again, you he feel and hear the same pain ring out. Um, well, or do you? Make me that cool test once again, Seamus. Oh, I'm going to burn uh, my first fortune point. Okay. And, uh, damn, that was the same damn roll. That was a 91. Seamus... As it, as the blade glances off, and you, you this time it's a little bit stronger of a pulse that that reverberates down your arm. And Seamus McCready, you're the proud owner of a stunned condition. Oh. As there's oh, some kind oh, of no. backlash, and you kind of uh, you stumble back, holding your head, and it looks like Crom's eyes are burning magnificently. So that's the oh. end of his turn. Been there. It is now... Seamus, it is now your turn. Oh. Um, so if I use a resolve, will it go away temporarily? Um, I believe... Let me make sure with the stun. I think or, you might be able to just make stun go away. Because I don't think that's technically psychological. Let me make sure, though. Da -da 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 -da. Stone conditions. Okay. Yes. No, you can use a resolve point to make it go away. All right. Let's do that. As soon as you do, Seamus, you feel a wave of nausea and you gain a fatigue condition. So you have another oh, point of exhaustion. Son of a bitch. Shit. You're at two exhaustion now. Well, let, me, let me write this minus 20 <laughs> down. <laughs> Seamus, I will remind you, if you get one more point of exhaustion, you will not be able to stand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to rough spot, so... <laughs> yes! Work. Now, you We're still have... <laughs> you still have your momentum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can... Uh, you can use your momentum and disengage from an opponent without taking an attack, if you'd like. Uh, I feel like he's just going to chase me down, or Cut it's, Raggedy in two. There is a possibility <laughs> either of those things could happen. Yeah, well, free to, free to take me. your turn. Well, this this is it. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna look to this this bastard, and uh, I'm gonna <laughs> say, uh, "Let's dance." <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Please I'll punch him in the in. balls. <laughs> I want to kill him with a sword attack on him. Okay, make me an attack roll. <laughs> At a minus 20, that is going to be a 7 out of uh, 40. Man. It, I mean, out of 50 with my momentum. Yeah, I couldn't have rolled worse. I rolled a 100. You lucky Ooh. bastard. Wow. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. So, how much damage was that from you? Um, Let's see. It will be 7 mm. points plus... Uh, let's see, 17, 27, 37, 47, uh, 11 total. Okay, 11 points of damage. Um, you rolled, it was a 37, right? Uh, a 7 out oh, of... Oh, 7, excuse 15. me. So, oh, wow, so you actually, um, as you lash out, you go for the head. And this does matter because... His armor is not as thick in certain places that you've noticed. He, ha he actually has exposed skin. Um, <clears throat> in particular, his head does not look as... Um, well, actually, it does. His head is actually just as heavily armored as his chest. My apologies. Some of his other body parts aren't as heavily armored. But um, <laughs> So that was a 11 total? Yes. So six. Seamus, you lash out <sighs> and plink off of oh, his no. helmet. You do get a point of momentum, but Ooh. it doesn't carve in. It doesn't penetrate the steel. You and um, you're standing there with this humongous <laughs> monstrosity of a man. But because of your action... 
he is um, out of position of sorts, and he's kind of stumbled a little bit. His helmet shifted slightly, and as he writes it, his next attacks are going to be at a penalty because I rolled a critical failure. Yes. All right, so that's it for you, I'm thinking. Yes, that'll be it. Okay. All right, so that is it for uh, Seamus. So that brings us back to the top of the round. Um, you guys once a hear once again hear the reverberating of fire of boom 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 boom, and you see several Skaven and cultists drop dead from the fire. But this time, you also see the chaos warrior that is not engaged with any of you. It looks like he takes one in the shoulder and he argh, kind of growls out. And um, his shoulder goes limp for a second, and then he kind of shrugs it. It looks like he's taken some damage. Um, let's see here. Marius, you see the creatures come out once again. This time you see two large beastmen in similar blackened plate armor that are approaching from behind the warrior you're facing. And they're running in your direction. But before they get oh. to you, the two creatures peel away from the shadows and intercept them. And it looks like they're both engaged in melee. By two, what you're assuming are some kind of rat creature that you've yet to see. Well, actually, you have seen one of these before. You've seen one on the mountaintop. Yeah. You're not sure what it is. But it is fast, very, very fast, and very lethal from the looks of it. And that's it for them. So that now brings us to... Marius. Right. You are frenzied. There is... Oh, actually, no, he didn't go yet, did he? Oh, uh, no, he didn't go, I guess. He didn't go yet, so actually it's, it's going to be his turn. It's his turn to retaliate against you with his great axe. Uh, Marius, I need you to defend yourself. Right. That is a 35 out of 100. Oh my god. And what does it t does it put you past 100 cuz we're going to we're going to do that just six levels of uh, um, no. It okay, does it not. does. Right at no. 100. Okay. Yeah, right at 100. It's still it's a shitload. So, yes. Um, you, ah, you rail out and you pierce him through. But this is defense. He's attacking me. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're right. I'm getting, um, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, you, yeah, you bat it aside. Um, make me one more okay. as he's going to attempt to do the same. Okay. That's a 46 out of 110. Yep, yep. Seb, you're still good. <laughs> Obviously. Um, your blood's pumping, and you easily shunt aside his second attack. Now it is your turn. All right. Ooh, that's a, that's a 30. Critical success. Yes. 120. Okay. Um, yeah. Just go ahead and roll me a D100, just one. Okay. Eighty-eight. Okay. So you um in your red fury, you you after deflecting the blows of this um lesser man, this lesser creature, you pivot and drive the pick down through his left thigh. And as you pierce through, you feel him just give way and thick blood begins to bubble out of the wound and paint the floor beneath him. As you pull it away, he falls to the floor somewhat limp. He's still trying to pick himself up with his axe. He is down on the ground. Bleeding out. Is that, is that dead? He's Fuck. technically not dead. Even after... He is he is in a state of dying. Okay. 
But these may not be just regular enemies that you can just wantonly fit, kill. You have faced other enemies that are similar to yourself that, you know, you have to finish off if you want to just kill them. All right, I'm giving so you do have another attack, another so it automatically it automatically hits. He's on the ground, okay. defenseless. You, you, okay. He's dead. So you, you use your second attack to finish him off. You bring it over the top of your head and pierce it through his skull, and he is dead at your feet. Um, right. You now must your, use your movement to charge the closest creature to you. Okay. So I'm going to have to roll. Uh, I'm going to have to have you pick uh, heads or tails, Marius. Uh, heads. Heads. Let's see if you charge Bragadine. All right. You Boy, don't. That's why I moved. <laughs> you don't. You don't charge Bragadine. You were the same distance from him from the Beastmen, so he has a choice okay. on his hands. But he's not looking in your direction, Bragadine. So he charges forward, just in a red haze. And you are in melee with the creature, which is also in melee with one of these cloaked assassins of sorts. And that is going to be the end of your turn. So that brings us to Bragadine. You're All currently right, um, engaged with a hulking monstrosity, and you see Seamus engaged with a likewise hulking monstrosity. <laughs> All right. First, I shout out, Ratman, help us man things. <laughs> oh, and, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> let me let me let me clarify. Do you want to make a um, a charm test, or do you want to use your action to actually do something? Uh, my action is going to be to attack. I just okay. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure because we could we could do this. We no, could roll. No, no, we no. could see how this goes. Um. Okay. So <laughs> I have. Uh, I'm thinking about it now. But I still got. I mean, I still got this. Uh, this chaos warrior in front of me. All right. Let's. Um, let's attack him. And okay, have one me... momentum. Yep. Yep. Okay. So go ahead and make me an attack. Now you are in a, seven. I will say, if you will remember your um, sword arm, is that so a minus negative, ten? So, yeah. So you so you break even. So uh, okay. what, so what did you get total? Uh, Twenty seven out of fifty seven. Three levels of success. Three levels of success. This is where fighting a champion of the dark gods comes into play, Bragadine. So I'm scared about. It. Um, you lash out with your sword, and as you do. The warrior takes the shield and completely blocks it, your sword arm, before it hits. Oh. And as he does, he thrusts the sword forward and pierces you through the gut. Oh, Because Jeez. if you miss attacking a champion of chaos, they hit you instead. Mm. Um, so, Bragadine, <laughs> you, you take... Man, it's not going to be good. Of course not. Um, you take eleven oh, it's wounds. Not very eleven. All right, all right. I can handle eleven. Okay, you can negate your toughness bonus as he slashes out towards your gut. Doesn't go through you. Takes a takes a good chunk of flesh off though. You flinch away. Um, you've lost your momentum. <laughs> so there's that now. Yep. Um, would you like to do anything else? Um. No, I don't want to open myself up to an opportunity attack from him, so I'm going to maybe kind of stand up and clutch at my side with my forearm, trying to hold the blood in, and ready my shield. <laughs> trying to hold the blood in. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. This guy's not taking my blood. <laughs> All right, so that is the end of your turn. That brings us to the remaining Chaos Warrior. Who you are fighting. <laughs> so, Bragadine, prepare yourself. I need you to roll defense of some kind. Oh, I got a 31 under 57, under 77, actually. Under 77? Oh, no, no, under 50, 50, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, because of your, uh, your shield. That's good. Yep. Yeah, so you actually bring the shield up and the blade clinks off. But I forgot that when the blade hits you, it lights you on fire. Son of a shit. So you're on fire right now. You have Ooh. one burning condition. Okay. Just one. 
as this is a hellish blade of some kind. So you can write down one burning condition for me. I got roll that later. Um, all right, so that's 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 all he can do, though. That's all he can do. He makes the one attack, um, deflects away. That brings us to Krom. Krom's pissed off, Seamus. He doesn't like you very much. Um, I don't like it either. Oh wait, he, uh, the other Chaos Warrior gets two attacks. Oh, oh wait. roll one more. Roll one more defense, <laughs> Bragadine. One more. <sighs> Oh, no. <laughs> it's a 93. Yep. That's oh. not going to that's not going to do very well yeah, this time. That's a, that's a fail. So, as you fail a second time, he lashes out um, with a return swing after he pierces your near your gut and takes your left arm, which is your shield arm. Yep. So, because of that, because this wasn't an even roll, I rolled. You you technically have two armor on your arm right now from the shield. Just okay. so you know. So you add that to your toughness bonus when you take a hit if it's not if it's not an even roll and I'll tell you if it is or isn't. Okay. Um so you take a oof, uh twelve points of what twelve wounds. You okay. can negate your with your toughness and your armor that you have from the shield. Barely standing. Okay. So you glance it off and you have another burning condition because it clipped the flesh. So you have two burning conditions now. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. <laughs> I feel like Seamus or uh, Braggadine might not be long for this world. Uh, so now we move to Krom. Um, Krom's going to kill you, Seamus. So I need you to brilliant. defend yourself. Uh, oh, yeah, I brought a fortune point. I rolled a hundred. Yeah, yeah bro, roll uh, that fortune point. Um, all right. This time I got a thirty. <coughs> a thirty-five. Okay, out of. And my my two momentum cancels out my exhaustion, so it'll be out of a sixty. So thirty-five, forty-five. Okay. Um, I have, you're not going to like this, Seamus. I have, uh, mm. let's see here. A crit. I, I have five levels of success. Okay. Um, yeah. Doesn't he get like a disadvantage? Is that with his disadvantage for his helmet? That's with his disadvantage. Oh. That's with his disadvantage. Um, you're going to take as he brings it in and he's going to clip your left arm. Oh. You are going oh, to no. take. Jesus, it's a lot. 17, <laughs> 17. You take 17 wounds as he almost cuts your arm off. Oh my okay. God. Just from a clip. Ooh. And you have a bleeding condition. So you. Ah! And he has another stroke. So you've lost your momentum at this point. Uh huh. And Krom right, is going me, to attempt to take your skull for the throne. Let me write my current hit points in there <laughs> Go first. ahead. All right. Um, all right, another defense. Go ahead and roll me another defense. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, we're going to burn our last fortune. Wait, no. I okay, burn. go ahead and burn it. I got, I got one fortune point left now. All right. That down. Um, oof, shit. This is the worst roll. That's uh, a 93. Oh, uh, no. Seamus McCready. It's out of 40, if it matters. That does matter, actually. <laughs> Since I lost my momentum. Um, <laughs> that matters because I also rolled very poorly but Ooh. not as poorly as you <laughs> so, oh, rolled the worst. <laughs> so let's say I, I, I don't want to add it up it's going to be a lot it's going to be a lot let's let's see here he if it's, if it's more than nine i'm, I'm probably it, out 
It is. He's going to try to take your left leg off as he sweeps Oof. down with the axe and it deals. I'm just going to add it up real quick. Let's see here. 14 wounds with a return <laughs> stroke. Oh, good God. 14 wounds and you take another bleeding condition as it bites into the flesh. <laughs> and so you're bleeding profusely from two places now as he brings the um, axe through and luckily he doesn't have another attack otherwise he would take your skull right now. <laughs> as you fall limp to the ground and if he, if you could see a smile through his helm you think he'd be smiling. Um, and that's where we're going to end tonight's episode oh, Rise no. of the Forsaken <laughs> and we're going to have to pick this up next time boys next no. time <laughs> so oh. <laughs> make sure you have all your stuff written down it's going to be um, crazy I think we just lost Braggading right there at the end <laughs> yep. um, he got upset Somebody, yeah, he, he just—he said he just got kicked. Um, somebody wants to send him an app, a uh, uh, invite here in a second. Um, while we're doing that, though, you know, as is tradition, we'll go over favorite moments. So, let's start with uh, with with Marius Wolf. Favorite moment of the night, Marius. Hmm. I really enjoyed uh, the. Um, the interaction or the passing of uh Kara Grimm oh. Amber Bailey. May he oh, grace like the whole of his ancestors. Exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was probably my favorite. What about uh what about Mr Mr. Doobie? Doobie, you got any favorites there? Um since uh, I'm probably not long for this world unless some <laughs> massive, massive divine intervention comes in, uh, I'll probably say my favorite part was, you know, enjoying that last drink. <laughs> what, what will probably become my last drink with <laughs> with the boys? Uh, with the boys, <laughs> you know, sh- you know, shooting the shit and all that. Oh no, because mm. uh, like shame take thoughts go. He's about to die a horrible death. He might. He just might. <laughs> Mr. Galactic, you got booted, but you're back now. Favorite moments, huh? Mr. Galactic? Uh, it was probably whatever I just missed. Uh, no, it was uh, <laughs> your description of Krom. I really like that when you were describing just the Chaos Warriors and then just Krom mm-hmm. coming out and his Minotaur gauntlets. I just thought that, that right there, I stopped and wrote that down, though. That was my favorite part. Awesome. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Did you not hear the end of the episode at all? Before you got uh, kicked? I heard um, Seamus took 14 wounds. Okay, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, Fe- Seamus falls limp. Luckily, Krom doesn't have another attack to take his skull. And that's where we that's where we ended. So I've got you guys all down in initiative. I've got everything written out. Make sure you have all your conditions and everything and your hit points all tallied up for next time. Okay. Um, favorite moment from the DM? Oh, it's going to be taking that skull, baby. That's going to be the favorite moment. <laughs> uh, Marius uh, is um, off, off in the... <laughs> he's off in the distance. He's not there to help you, Seamus. He's, nope. He's hulked out right now. Um, I'm all, I'm all let, angry, you know? let himself be taken away. I mean, you know, I can usually hold my own in, in single combat, but, you know, exhaustion's, exhaustion's a rough thing. It is. For all it you, is, all I know. kids out there. Exhaustion. He's like a chaos lord, too, man. So. <laughs> he is. He is. He's not a, he's not just your, your regular guy. This may or may not be like a, like an end boss for a level, you know? It's fine. Oh, uh, the end of us. I, boss. Yeah. I, so I, I tell you what, though, if, if Seamus, you know, gets his hands on his, his skull, oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh boy. Wait, we might what, have a new chaos a champion in the midst, in our midst here. <laughs> so, uh, regardless, guys, I'd like to say thank you all for watching. This is um, our, our private game. We enjoy all the comments, guys, so do make sure to, to comment. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. We love to run this um, for you guys. We enjoy playing, of course. Um, 
yeah, and that's about it, guys. Um, before we go, um, I forgot what I was going to say. So I'm going to drop the mm. ball on that one. I'm going to edit that out. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> That's not going to make it to the final video. I might not not edit edit it out. We'll see. (laughs) Probably not. Regardless. Uh, uh, I have been... The the fans, you know, how... how, uh... Oh, that's right. Be saved, you know? That's what I was doing. That's what there I was going go. to say. I'm glad you brought it back up. Viewer decision. No Viewer decision. Viewer decision. Seamus's fate may lie in the hands of the masses here. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> I have to be particular in my wording here. Because <laughs> people go crazy. Yeah, people are ruthless. They are pretty ruthless, it's true. Um, is Seamus's skull worthy of the throne? Mm. Ooh, insult. Or not? Mm. Comment down below for our viewer decision. We'll find There's out... There's going to be some good comments. We'll I'll find out what, what happens. We'll find out what happens, <laughs> what people think. So, <laughs> regardless, guys... We'll be seeing you in the next uh, next episode. I have been Jumbo Thick. Thank you very much for watching. We have enjoyed you all. This has been Rise of the Forsaken, and we are looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a good day. <laughs>